crafty friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with a very special unboxing. This is for a limited edition, limited time offering collection from Not Too Shabby and it is their Halloween kit. It is so awesome. I was thrilled and honored when Jamie reached out to me and asked if I would showcase her new upcoming Halloween kit and oh my goodness was I ever blown away. It is amazing. Not only am I showcasing this wonderful Halloween collection, but Jamie introduced me to Helen over at Crafty Mama Diaries, and the two of us are doing a collaboration with this kit to showcase for y'all today. Now this kit goes on sale at 9 a.m. on Saturday, August 6th, and as you know, Jamie's kits sell out very quickly. There's a link in the description notes below. Hop on over to her channel and make sure you purchase this as soon as possible before it's gone. Today, I'm going to be making a whole bunch of little treat pouches, tags for treat bags, and I'm even going to be making some mini slimline cards and boxes for the mini slimline cards that can also be used to house candies and treats and all sorts of other Halloween. Halloween goodies. I'm so excited to show you this collection as well as the little makes that I've made. All right, y'all, let's get into it. So here it is, folks. This was the package that I received from Jamie, and I am so excited about this. This collection is super fun. It comes with a six by six paper pad. There are uh, 24 double-sided sheets, two of each design. So let's take a look inside. Halloween candy, this is so awesome. And then the back side, we've got this really purple, I mean, it looks like it could be glitter, but I'm seeing, you know, like sugar, like the sugar decorations that you do for cake decorating. It looks like that chunky sugar. Oh my goodness, look at these bats. And then we have this really nice little Harlequin print, some bats with our candy. Look at these skulls. <laughs> and more lollipops, and then more of that kind of glittery paper that I really see as more colored sugar, but it's so pretty. And the gold, this is neat little geometric. And then we've got some more of the jack-o'-lanterns and bats. And then on this side, there's like a trick-or-treat bag with the bats and the jack-o'-lanterns. I love the way the candy corn looks, but I am not a candy corn fan, so. <laughs> I feel like candy corn is like the um, cilantro of the candy world. You either love it or hate it. And I am on the hate it side on the candy corn. Love cilantro, by the way, but look at this purple. I love these bats. These polka dots are fantastic. Ooh, spider webs. And then the spider webs with the jack-o'-lanterns. And we got the jack-o'-lantern faces, some more black uh, paper with white polka dots. Oh, now these are cute. Look at these little kind of apothecary jars with the candy in it. And I love the skull paper in the background. That's awesome. Then we've got our little bats. Oh, look at their eyelashes. There's the cutest eyelashes on the kitties and on the bats. That's adorable. Ooh, green paper. And do you guys see what I mean? It's not just a flat anything. There's like an ombre to it too. So you get different shades. I just love that about her papers. Got the black here. Look at these. <laughs> and these little fancy bats. Let me hold this up here. Are you guys seeing the attitude on these bats? I mean, she is just fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> they are so cute. And then more of these kind of this geometric cube back here. Love that. And then it looks like we're repeating again. Oh my goodness. These are fantastic papers. Of course, I had no doubt Jamie's collections are always fabulous, or I should say fabulous. <laughs> but they do sell out. So you guys make sure you go ahead and secure these. She said that she was gonna have the kits available and very few of kind of individual um, items available as well. So make sure you pick up what you need or want um, because that is pretty fantastic. And then let's look at the ephemera. Oh my goodness, look how cute all of this ephemera is. Uh, I just love these kitties and the bats and their little sassy eyelashes. <laughs> I mean, look at her. How cute is she with her little fang sticking out? Oh my goodness. This is too, too, too cute. And now let's look at some of the other things. We've even got a stencil in this package. Call Me Crafty Owl, Alicia over at the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel. And this is one of her stencils that's like a spider web. Isn't that fantastic? 
And then look at the stamps and dies that come in this collection kit also. I love that Jamie includes the corresponding dies. Um, you get a perfect cut around your sentiment stamps and around your image stamps, and they're so cute. And just look at these adorable gnomes. Are they not the cutest? The sentiments are super fun too. It's fab fabulous and have a spectacular birthday. Sweet and spooky. Oh my goodness, these are just adorable. All right, well, I am super excited to show you what I'm making. And like I said before, I'm doing a collaboration with Helen over at Crafty Mama Diaries, and I'm so excited about it. She's gonna have her project linked today as well. And I've got a link to her and her channel and her project video in the description below. So make sure you hop on over there and subscribe to her if you haven't already, y'all. I am in awe of some of her coloring that she does on stamps. I'm, I'm still learning, <laughs> y'all, I'm still learning. But yeah, she is a lovely woman and I'm so thankful to Jamie for introducing me to her because we're becoming really good friends in working in this collaboration. And that is just such a blessing in and of itself. So stay tuned because my project right here is coming up next. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna play with these stamps. I put all of the stamps on my Misty. I took every single one of them, all of these, out of the package, and I laid them out on my Misty, and I laid them out in such a way that I can fit the dies around them so that um, I don't have to do a bunch of individual things. I can just do them in a large grouping. And then I can easily take a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and cut it in half at five and a half inches on the 11 inch side. And now I can make multiple stamps of multiple stamps. <laughs> so um, I've got this laid out in such a way that I'm just gonna place the cardstock in here. I'm gonna ink all of this up and just stamp away. It may take a couple passes and that's why I'm using the Misty. Especially on some of these, when you have stamps that have like a large, you know, a large band here of inked area, it usually takes a couple passes, you know, not a lot, but a couple. Ink it all up, and then we're gonna lay it down. And I'm not really pressing hard, I'm just sort of sliding it over it with just a light pressure, I guess. And so I'm gonna go over at least one more pass, maybe two on the stripes. There we go, I love it. I think it looks really great. And so now I can just start stacking these up so that I have pages to color before running them through um, my die cutting machine all at once. And that way I'm sort of, you know, I'll use all the dies at the same time as I'm using all of the stamps at the same time. And it, it, makes, it makes for short work, you know? All right, now I've got a nice stack of stamped images just ready to color. And this is also a great way to get the kids involved because I can simply give them one of these to color in and then run it through the die cutting machine. And then it's, you know, it's their color combinations. It's their choice if they want crayons or markers or whatever. Is it gonna be the, you know, the best, most wonderful coloring job? No, but it's gonna be theirs. And so it's just nice for them to have a hand in, in making a handmade card, right? And that's just always sort of nice. Um, and so then to clean off my stamps, I love using these stamp chamois from, from Lawn Fawn. And it is so great because I'm able to clean these off without getting any lint on everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and get them put away. Now I've grabbed a few colors here. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them. I just sort of grabbed a few. I'm using the Triglend markers by Spectrum Noir. Placing another piece of paper underneath this one. <laughs> I flipped my mat over. If you guys saw my, my other video where I completely destroyed my new mat, the other side is, is, is absolutely trashed. <laughs> But I flipped my mat over and I want to be careful to sort of try to protect it. So I'm at least going to try to put another layer of paper underneath here so that I, you know, try to prevent some bleed through. And then I'm just going to go around and color these. I am not a professional colorist by any stretch of the imagination, like at all. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just using some skills I picked up, you know, way back in kindergarten. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's just all I'm doing. I'm gonna color these out and then I'll be right back. We're gonna uh, go ahead and run them through the die cutting machine.
So I've colored all of my images here. And um, again, I'm not a... <laughs> I'm not really a skilled colorist, but I'm I'm happy with how they turned out. I think it's great. And now what we're going to do is get my die cutter. And this just makes it really simple when you do it in kind of an assembly line style like this, because now I can run one sheet through and cut all the images at the same time. When your dies arrive, they are connected, right? The manufacturing process of them, they have these little connective strips on here. And I just have a pair of snips here and I simply go along and clip them apart. Once I've clipped them apart, I'm going to lay them over the corresponding images of the stamped images that I've just now colored. And I use some of this repositionable tape. I think it's called the mint tape. Once you get the die set over your image the way you like it, just simply lay that over, press it down, and it'll secure it in place so it's not gonna move around while you're continuing to uh, lay the other dies over the images. Now that all my dies are securely in place, I'm gonna run them through my die cutter. And look at how great these turned out. I love the clean look of the cutouts, and I love especially that even on the balloons, there's cutouts there behind the space of the strings for the balloons. I think that's such a great effect. I've gone ahead and secured the dies on the next sheet, and I'm gonna to continue to run them through until I get them all cut, and I'll be right back. We now have all of our pieces cut out, and I think they look fantastic. I've got a little smattering of them here for us to use to make some tags with. These tags are gonna be perfect to attach to any treat bag that you might have. I'm gonna use them to attach to the treat pouches that we're gonna be making next. And in an attempt to maximize the amount of use we can get out of these amazing papers, I've chosen to make the tags three and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. And that way we can cut a two by three inch rectangle of the pattern paper to back on the tags. So to begin, let's cut some pieces that are three and a quarter by two and a quarter. And I've got some of our pattern paper cut to two inches by three inches. And we are going to attach our pattern paper to our cardstock tag pieces. And then we're just gonna arrange some of our cutouts onto our tags to make a nice little scene or just a, a, a nice little decoration. We'll place this little sweet and spooky on here with our pumpkin. I love the idea of having a spider dangling from the spider web. So I'm gonna kind of tuck that underneath there up in that upper corner. And let's see what else we can do. Um, we've got the sweet and spooky. Maybe we'll do a lollipop. I think that looks pretty cute. And then let's take one of our little gnomes over here. Let's sit this one up here. And I think she is fabulous. <laughs> Maybe a muffin. Yeah, let's do a muffin since she's holding one. So all we really need to do now is go ahead and glue them down. That was super simple. I just glued them down. I went ahead and made some more. Don't they look great? And now we're gonna make some treat pouches to attach these two so that we can have them as just a really cute little gift, uh, a little treat to hand out. These are the little treat pouches that we're gonna make. This design has been around for a long time. I've seen it on all sorts of um, videos on Pinterest, on Instagram, things like that. I don't know who came up with it, but it's absolutely genius. And what you do is you just take a six by six piece of paper and fold it in such a way that you end up with two little envelopes on either side. Now I have made these in the past to hand out little tea bags. They're just perfectly sized for these Ghirardelli chocolate squares. They fit in there perfectly. Like I said, the tea bags fit in there. And I found that even the smaller Reese's peanut butter cups will fit in there. They're a little stuffed, but that's okay. I think it looks great. You could even slip something else inside of here, maybe a gift card or some other lollies or something like that. I love that they stand up and I just think it looks super, super cute. So I use this orange satin ribbon and a couple different variants of some baker's twine that I had found at the Dollar Tree. To make the treat pouches, we're gonna begin with a piece of six by six cardstock. You're simply gonna fold it in half from corner to corner, and then we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna make a mark on a half inch on either side of that center fold line. We can do it with a pencil and then fold it. I think it's just easier to take your scoring tool and just run a line down there and we're basically making a score mark a half an inch on one side of that line that we just folded and then a half an inch on the other side of that line that we just folded. And then what we need to do to make those two side marks is I'm using my centering ruler 
and I know that the space between the two needs to be three inches. So I'm gonna find the center and on a six by six paper, angle to angle, it measures eight and a half inches. So the center of it is gonna be four and a quarter inches from the edge, um, from, from this point. So I need three inches in the middle here. And so I'm gonna come over to the inch and a half inch mark and I'm just gonna make a little tick mark there. And I'm gonna come over to the inch and a half on the other side and make a tick mark there. And now I've got an opening of three inches and I'm not necessarily gonna score those lines and I'll show you why here in a minute. So to fold these, you're gonna fold it in half like this. And then you're gonna fold these secondary score marks that you just made a half an inch from that first fold. You're gonna fold them back on themselves in kind of an accordion fold manner, just like that. And then for these side marks here that we just did the, the tick mark in at the inch and a half mark, we're gonna take that piece and fold it over so that the, the middle meets each other. So each of these score marks are gonna meet each other, but I'm folding it on that inch and a half mark. And I'm gonna give it a nice firm crease. Do the same thing over here. What I like to do is place my finger on my the mark I made, the little tick mark, and lift it up. And then I'll make sure that I've kind of already begun that crease where it needs to be. And go ahead and give it a pressing like that. And then they come together really well. You're gonna have a piece that looks like this. You're gonna fold, you know, where you've got these envelope openings. You're gonna fold the envelope openings up on to each other like they face each other. And then each one of these sides is gonna get fold back, folded back like that to make this really cute little envelope, this little pocket that's gonna stand up. And now the last thing we need to do is simply punch a hole at the top. We're gonna to take one of our tags that we made, and I think it'd be really cute to punch the hole in the center of the spider web. I think that looks kind of cute. And I'm gonna take all three of my strings here. You don't have to use three. I just thought that the color combination looked nice. And we're gonna press them through that hole. And one of the things I found that's really easy to do is if I take the small end of my scoring tool and I go ahead and sort of feed that into, you know, the hole kind of pressing on the ribbon, pushes them through. Once I get them through there, and then I'm gonna feed them through this other hole. If you use larger ribbon, I do suggest that you use maybe a darning needle or some sort of a yarn needle um, to feed those through. It would make it a really easy way to get the larger ribbon through, um, but I'm using the smaller ones and, and it works fine for me to sort of press it through with that scoring tool. And then we're simply gonna tie a bow and that's it. Once we add our chocolate, we have the most adorable little treat pouch to hand out for Halloween or for birthdays or as I was showing you here, maybe for fall or Christmas or whatever season you have. These are also really great for Valentine's Day and they just work out really cute like that. So I'm very happy with the way those turned out. So that was pretty easy. I have come up with nine of these sweet little treat pouches and made all of these awesome tags and I still have all these other tags to use on our next project. So let's go ahead and get started on that one now. So to make our boxes, we're gonna begin with a piece of cardstock that measures eight and three eighths by eight and a half. And I'm using this 110 pound cardstock from Recollections available at Michael's, but you can use any cardstock you like. It doesn't have to be the sturdier cardstock. This will work with a you know thinner cardstock, but um, I just, I like the, the feel that this gives it. So I, I do use a heavier cardstock. One of the things I wanna point out is that when you're scoring a heavier weight cardstock, there is a tendency for your scoring tool to wanna to jump out of the um, grooves because it's just it's just really thick. So, you know, go slow, it, it'll be okay. And if it does jump out, it's totally fine. It's, it's not gonna be a big deal. We're gonna be able to work around that. So um, on the eight and three eighths inch side, we're gonna score it at one half inch. And again, I'm moving kind of slow just because it's a heavier cardstock. One inch, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, and eight. And then we're gonna turn it to the eight and a half inch side and we're gonna score it at one half inch, one, seven and a half, and eight. 
and you can use scissors. I prefer to use a finger blade, but you use whatever you know cutting tool you prefer best. I'll have a diagram for this in the accompanying cutting guide on my website. This is the exact same way as I made the boxes for my A2 cards and my boxes for the three by three cards as well. This is the exact same same method. I'm just um, <laughs> I'm just changing the size on it so that it can hold both candy, which we're going to put into it, and these can also double as a box for um, mini slimline cards too, which is just kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and make these cuts and I'll be right back and show you what it looks like. And once we've made our cuts, we have something that looks like this and it's time to fold and burnish all of our score marks. If you're making this out of pattern paper and um, you aren't necessarily going to add any additional embellishments or pattern paper to it, I would say go ahead and glue the box together at this point, but we're going to add some embellishments. So it's easier for me to um, glue them on while it's flat. So I'm going to wait and uh, glue it together once we get all of our embellishments on the front. Now we're going to make some mini slimline cards. And I have seen mini slimline cards that measure you know, three and a quarter by six and a quarter or three and a quarter by six and a half or some variation on that. But I'm actually gonna make mine a little bit smaller. And the reason being is that I want to be able to fit four card bases out of a single sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. By cutting this cardstock into quarters, I'm gonna end up with four pieces of six by six cardstock that when folded in half, measure three by six. So those are the dimensions I'm going to use to make my mini slim lines with. And let's go ahead and make some card bases very quickly. Now I could cut all of these down into six by six squares and then score them to make our cards, you know, the folds for our cards. But instead, I'm just, just gonna cut them into six by 12 inch rectangles. And that way I only have to make one score mark for two cards. So I'm gonna run through these very quickly, score them at three inches, and then we're gonna, tr we're gonna cut them down to six by six squares before folding them for our card bases. It just makes fast work of it. Now that we've got our card bases made and the finished size measures three by six, it's time for us to go ahead and decorate them. And if you'll remember, we cut these strips here to back our tags. Um, we cut them into two by three inch rectangles. So we cut two inch strips off of our pattern paper. So we've got these pieces here that measure four by six. From the four inch side, we're gonna cut a piece that measures two and seven eighths, just like that. And then on the six inch side, we're gonna trim off an eighth of an inch. We're gonna back it down to five and seven eighths. And that is gonna be the base for our card, you know, for the matting for our card. And then we can put decorations on there. We can attach ephemera and sentiments and things like that. But these are gonna be really simple, y'all. It's just gonna be a piece of pattern paper on there like that. Now we're gonna use these cutoffs, so don't worry about that, but go ahead and set them aside for now. Once we've cut our pattern paper, we're simply going to glue them down onto our card bases. Now that we've got all of our card bases made and covered with our matted uh, pattern paper, just the singular piece of pattern paper, they're ready to be decorated. But before I start putting decoration on the outside, I wanna use the stencil that is included in the kit and it's by Alicia at the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it's called the Wacky Web Background Stencil. And I thought it would be really neat to just have sort of a hint of a spider web on the inside of the cards. So I'm gonna use a couple different colors of ink here. I've got one by Gina K Designs called Moonlit Fog, and then the other one is Slate. And I'm just gonna you know, use a combination of both of them, mixing them together and then coming over the top. Now, if you don't want your stencil to move around, and, and I don't, I'm gonna use some of this repositionable tape, find a spot that I you know, want the stencil to be in, maybe something kind of like this. Let's see, this card is probably gonna open this way, so let's do it like this. And I'm just gonna tape it down in some places that I'm not gonna put the ink. I'm not gonna come all the way to the edge of the stencil, I'm just kind of getting a hint of color here swirling my ink into my blending brush, kind of picking up a little bit of both so that it's on my blending brush, and then just lightly swirling over the stencil to get, you know, like a, a hint of a spider web background here. I'm not, I'm not looking to make it too prominent, but um, definitely wanna be able to sort of have the suggestion of it, right? 
And then when we peel that off, doesn't that look great? Super spooky, kind of smoky looking. And I think it's just a nice little surprise inside of the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and stencil the inside of the rest of them and I will be right back. Now that we've placed our little spider web <laughs> sort of shadow inside here, we're ready to move on to decorating the cards. And some of them, honestly, you could just keep them plain. I mean, doesn't this look amazing? I, I love it, I think it's fantastic. The pattern paper really does speak for itself. But let's go through and start playing with our ephemera pack and some of the other embellishments that we made with our stamped images, as well as some of the tags that we made, because these would be great to put on the fronts of some of these cards as well. You know, just that alone makes for a fantastic card. We might put a ribbon or a corresponding, you know, pattern paper strip behind it or something like that. We can always come along here with something like this with some of our cutoffs, but I think they look really great. So I'm gonna go through, decorate these, um, and I'll be right back. We've gone ahead and decorated the front of our box, and now it's time for us to assemble it. And I'm going to assemble it in the exact same way as I've assembled the other boxes that I've done tutorials for, for the A2 size box and the three by three box. And so I'm gonna run through it pretty quickly, but I will have those other tutorials listed in the description below if you want a little more information. One of the things I like to do is go around and bend these three pieces back because they're gonna make it easier for us to um, attach the box together. I put some glue on this one little tab here and I'm gonna hold it up to the corner. I'm just gonna hold it in place long enough for that glue to catch. And I'm making sure that the edge of the paper is in alignment with the edge of the fold for that tab so that I've got squared corner there. Once that catches, I'm gonna move around and do the next little tab in the exact same way and I'm going to go all the way around until I have all four of these little tabs attached. Now that all four tabs are attached, I'm going to place some glue on these flaps here, press them on inside, and one of the things that I will point out is that with this heavier weight cardstock, it's a little harder for that glue to catch. I mean, it sort of wants to push itself back up. So I take some clips and just hold it in place. If you're using like a 65 or an even 85 pound cardstock or something like that that's not quite as heavy as this 110 pound cardstock, you won't need to do that. You can use the bone folder and just give it a little bit of pressure and it will stick down in place. Uh, for whatever reason, this heavier cardstock, it just needs, a, just needs a little help. It just needs a little coaxing into place there until that glue can set. So I put those on. And it doesn't have to be on long, just, just long enough for it to grab, right? So once that's in place, then we're gonna go ahead and glue this other one down. Let's pull these out. And this one in, and then our box is completed. And now that our box is completed, it's time to put some goodies inside. And like I said, this is sized in such a way that it will hold these um, mini slimline cards and envelopes if you were to make corresponding envelopes. So that makes a nice little gift box there too, um, especially if it's maybe not Halloween. I mean, I can see gifting Halloween cards, but I see more gifting, you know, maybe general sentiment cards or Christmas cards or, or something else. Um, Valentine's cards would be really great in these little mini slim lines. But yeah, so um, that would be great for holding cards but I'm also gonna use it for holding candy because these chocolate bars fit perfectly in here, just like that. And so that makes a nice little presentation. We then just close it up, go ahead and slide in our sides, and then we're gonna tie it with ribbon. I have some others that I've gone ahead and made. And as you can tell, I've been able to make, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these boxes. And I've put all sorts of different treats inside of them. On these, I chose to attach a card front to my box. And it makes for a really nice way to send a message and write a little sentiment in there to the recipient. When we open them up, I've placed a little packet of apple cider mix and a little Ghirardelli chocolate square. And those fit in there really nicely. And it's a great way to just give someone a, a little treat. 
tied up with a bow makes a fantastic presentation. This one here, again, I've attached the card front to it and we have a different assortment of candies and some tea and just other yummy goodies. And then on this one, this was made with the scraps that I had of the paper. I used some Love from Lizzie peel-offs in between the seams to connect them. And we just have a really nice assortment of um, fun things in here. On this one, I went ahead and did place some Halloween cards in here. So again, we've got the card front on there so that we can write a little sentiment. And then when you open it up inside, there's a collection of several different Halloween cards that we made with the papers and the ephemera. And I just think that they all turned out really great. And these are the only scraps I have remaining, you guys. These tiny little slivers of paper here and these few ephemera pieces, both from the ephemera collection and ones that I made with the stamp sets. So I'm really excited that I was able to use all of these papers. Let's go over everything that I was able to make. I made eight treat boxes slash card boxes. I made 16 mini slimline cards. I made nine of these little treat pockets that just are so cute. They stand up on their own and I love the way these turned out. I just think they're really adorable. And I was even able to put together 17 of these little treat bags using the tags that we made and I think they turned out so cute. I mean, look at these, aren't they just adorable? And there's plenty of room on the back to write a little to from. And I'm really excited because I've got a jump start on all of the Halloween treats that I'm gonna be making for my kids' classes this year. So that's a really great bonus. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I'm super excited to have gotten a jump start on the Halloween treats that I need to make for my kids' classes. And it's just really fun to be able to play with these papers. Be sure and click on the link to go on over to Helen's channel at Crafty Mama Diaries and check out the project that she's making with these super awesome papers also. And hop on over to Jamie's shop and order this Halloween kit as soon as possible because they sell out lightning fast. I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.